Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> been a while, I know. Sorry about that, but it's just time. And I've been busy with this project upcoming now. So you've got a pre-2018 MG3 and you want to fit an Android doubled-in head unit. How would you go about that? Now, you could use this. Or you could have a single DIN. Um, but your choices are pretty limited. I mean, the F7WE that I fitted... Uh, a few months ago, link up there to that video if you want to see that. As much as I like that unit, I absolutely hated the fitting kit, the, the blanking plate that covered the original MG3 radio hull to allow it to fit a true single DIN radio. I absolutely hated it. So I decided to go one step further. How about fit the complete dashboard and centre console from a facelift model? How hard can it be? Stay tuned if you want to see how I did that. So there it is. That, hopefully, is everything I need to do the job. We'll just quickly run through it all. So, obviously, you got the dashboard, the centre console. That metal frame is the metal frame that's, that's where the steering column bolts to. So this is the metal frame that actually supports the steering column, the dashboard and all that that piece there bolts down the bottom there and it's what supports like the front section of the center console over here this is the heater pipe air duct that runs to the face fence in, inside the dashboard over here we've got a glove box there's some wiring in there which i'll go through later on but there's some i've got to do some wiring mods uh the driver's side under dash trim which goes in here these are the two end caps for the dashboard um, face fence left and right center piece where the touch screen goes lower steering column trim upper steering column trim and instrument cluster surround and these are the two side pieces for the center console airbag off switch um, got the hazard stop start and traction switch which goes into the just in front of the gear stick on the center console there you got this thing because i'm not fitting an mg touch screen that fits in there and this is for this for the uh mg3 that doesn't have um a touch screen which is a very basic model i don't even think they make them anymore they are rare all right coming over the side we've got passengers airbag Inside this box is the gear, uh, the gear knob and the gear lever gator. There's an MG touch screen there. Although I'm not actually fitting that. There is a reason why I need it. And we've got a, a Toto S8 um, double DIN Android head unit. So yeah. That is hopefully all I need. Let's uh, start building it up, shall we? Okay, got the dash upside down. This time we're in the dining room. And we're going to start with the passenger's airbag. There it is. So, we just need to drop him into place. And it looks like it only goes one way. So, that goes in there. And then I've got to prise that down into there somehow. Right, okay, let's get a screwdriver. And we'll have to open up. And then it's secured with two screws. So, two screws. Obviously, the screws aren't the only thing that holds it in. It is bolted to the dash frame by those two there. Okay, 
that's that done. Right, now that's in, the next thing is the heat event pipe. So, that's the pipe. And that fits in here. Ton of screws that hold it in. Okay, and well that's that bit done. Okay, now the pipe is in, fits and vents. Now this side just pushes in and is secured with one screw. Like so. And the driver's one, he doesn't have a screw. just pushes and clips in like so right next bit and this is probably going to be the most tricky out of the whole job I think I don't know yet um, is this is the head unit that's going in it's in a Toto S8 it's a full Android unit it's got loads of features absolutely bloody brilliant right the problem we've got is there is no provision in here for a double din cage to fit that now I have scoured the internet and nobody makes a fitting kit to fit a double din head unit to a facelift MG3. They just don't exist. No one does it. So I've got to make my own. Um, now the first thing that becomes apparent now, when you get the head unit out of the box, it doesn't have these side brackets on. I've had to put those on because obviously then that would slide into a cage. Well, I can't fit a cage because there is nowhere for a cage to go. There is no double din slot. So the first thing that comes apparent is it doesn't go past these. Now, these are not used. On the uh, real basic model, which just has a normal radio, there's a picture of it just coming up now so you can see what I mean. These screws hold the um, plastic cage in for that radio. You can't fit a double din to that. Um, I'm not going to go buying one of those to hack it about because it's going to be in the way anyway. So as you can see, this doesn't even drop down in the hole with these brackets on and I do need those. So first thing, I'm going to have to cut these off to allow that to slip in. On the upside though, that is a perfect fit in there. That's made me quite happy. So here is the MG head unit. If I just tilt the camera up so you can see, that does fit in there, because that's how it's meant to go. Obviously, I'm not going to be using that, but what I do need is these fixing points. So, yeah, I feel bad about hacking up a brand new touchscreen, but when needs must, let's have a go there. So, warranty if damaged, void if damaged. Uh, I should slice that label. Right, off with the top cover then.
won't get out of there. So, touch screen. Don't think I'm going to need that bit. But that is the piece that I need. So obviously it's got securing bits on what I'm going to have to do. Looking at this with a bit of careful measuring, I'm going to have to cut the middle out of it so that my unit will drop through the middle and then somehow secure those side pieces to this somehow or other. So I'll work it out. There we go, that's the piece I need. Right, so this is where I'm up to. <clears throat> so I cut these two pieces off. Oh, that one went that side. And obviously the other one the other side. And that will allow the radio to fit in here. And then I made this. It's not finished yet. So that goes into there. So I cut the middle out of this. And then put the radio in. Put the front fascia on. And then... Put these on to the side of the radio from the but from behind turn the dash upside down put them in behind and then with the dash upside down and the radio pushed firmly up to the front of that trim and an equal gap all the way around i then hot glued those side pieces on okay just to hold them in place and now i'm going to go and take this up my mates and then i'm going to spot weld those side pieces on and then pick the hot glue off. Right, so there it is. I've uh, the welding wasn't that. It didn't weld very nice um, because it's um, got some funny coating on the metal. But anyway, it's it's in there. It's solid. So basically, I slid the radio in lined up my lines that I drew earlier to get the radio at the right depth. You see there, I drew around the screws and drew a line around the bracket, tighten the bracket up, and then put the whole thing in. And then hopefully, uh, my tripod's in the car, but if I put this back on now, as you can see, I have to take the vent pipe out to do all this. So if I put the pipe back in, uh, the, the cover back on, you'll see that it fits perfectly. And I'll have to um, put the phone down to do this in one moment. And now you can see that the hedge unit fits really nicely in there. Yep, there is a little bit of a gap around it, but you know what? It's so minuscule, it's not even worth bothering with. So here we go, that's that completed. I've now got to modify the wiring in the center console. Now on the 16 model, yeah? The airbag off switch is here, the hazard switch is here, the traction control switch is here and the stop start button is here on the facelift it's all incorporated in this switch which sits around here on the facelift model the airbag off switch on the facelift is in the glove box so obviously we're going to need to do some wiring modifications all right to get the center console out of one of these it's not really that bad of a job <coughs> so grab the cup holder by here and pull it towards you it's going to lift both up when both of them lift up grab the gear lever surround and pull like that and this piece now there we go come all the way out and then disconnect the traction off switch like so and then on the gear lever I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. I have to get the phone off the tripod. There's a clip, like a fuel pipe clip. You just need to cut that. And I've left my cutters indoors, so I'm going to have to go and get them. Cut that clip, and then the gear knob will pull off. There's the clip there. So we just need to cut that, or just... Oh, I can't do it one hand, you know. Let me put you on the tripod again. Should be enough. Maybe. Oh, perhaps not. <coughs> there we go. I should pull off. There's the clip there, look. So that's what you have to cut. And then 
it just pulls off. If you haven't got one of these clips, you can just put a cable tie on. As long as it squeezes all them together, the gear knob will stay, the gear knob will stay on. So that's that off. Next, I'll get you off the tripod again. We got a screw here and a screw here. Work them out. Okay, that's that. Right, at the front, oh, on. at the front, you've got a cap, and you prize out that cap, and there's a screw behind, and the same thing on the other side, and also there is a trim at the front there, and you need to pop out that clip there, and then this trim here comes out. So I pop that cap out of there. And there's a screw behind and then this trim panel here there's a clip up right up there pop him out and then that trim panel should pull off like so and there we go i'm just gonna get that screw out of there now like so and then repeat that on the other side right there's a trim panel here we need to get that out so just poke the screwdriver down there and prise it up it should pop out like so and then either side of the seats just in there on both sides is a screw i've already taken them out and all you do is get the console and just pull it back like so and then lift it up and then disconnect the hazard switch and the uh, accessory socket, which I'll do now. I obviously can't do it one-handed. Right, now that's out of the way. There's the plug to the hazard switch and the airbag off switch. And there's the accessory socket. Now this lot here all needs to be moved to about here. The traction control switch. I don't need to extend those wirings or cut it because that's about the perfect length because it's the, the switch pack sits in front of the gear lever so i'm gonna to have to cut this loom now and then pull these wires back through here to come out around the same place as this and it's all in this loom anyway it's just a case of pulling the wires through to where i need them right so this is where we're up to uh that wire in there stays it goes to this which i think is the g sensor and there's one back here to the handbrake switch that all stays, just got to tape that back up and the accessory socket and hazard switch is now up to here. So now I've just got to re-tape this loom back up and put it all back where it was. Okay, so that's all taped up now, uh, back as it was. And it's taped up here now. Uh, that one there is the plug for the accessory socket, which is going to go somewhere about there. And now we just need to get these wires cut now and then put them into the other plug to fit the other switch all right we're going to start with the illumination wire the obviously to to illuminate this switch and it using the hazard switch come airbag off switch the illumination positive is in pin 5 and it is the red one with the black trace there and the negative for the illumination is that black wire there what I need to do first, I need to get all this tape off for these wires here and then cut them to the right length. Okay, so I've cut the uh, red and black and black. So that's our illumination positive and negative. And on this plug, they go into pins five and six, which is the red and orange and black 
those two wires there, which is these two. So we connect those two into them two. Well, I haven't got any heat shrink, so tape is going to have to be. Should be fine there. Oh, fingers crossed, if I plug this switch in and turn the side lights on, it should light up. Let's have a look. Here we go. I'm not sure how well you can see that if I turn the torch off on the phone a second. So, side lights on, side lights off, on, off, on, off. So that's the illumination sorted. Right, the next wire we need to connect is a ground, and that is going to be the ground that when you push the hazard button, the puts the hazard switch signal wire to ground, and when you turn the SCF or SCS off with stability control, traction control, when you turn that off, it puts this grey wire to ground. So we need a ground, a main ground that those two wires can ground against when you push the relevant buttons. So the ground on this is pin seven. Now these colours are wrong, I've just, this is actually out of an MGZS, so the wiring colours are completely wrong. So for the ground I've used a blue wire, it's actually supposed to be black, but I've used a blue because I only had one, only had one black wire. So blue is our ground, so let's do that one next. It's starting to get dark out now, so I'm having to use the phone to light the place up. Anyway, right that's the ground done, that one there. Right the next one I want to do is the hazard signal. Uh, which is pin two of wherever my other plug is gone. This plug here, and that should be a green and brown wire, which is that one there. And that's got to go to the purple wire of this one, which is pin eight, which is that one there. So if we join that to that, the hazard light should work. So there we are, green and brown connected to purple. My plug to switch in, hopefully. The hazard should work. Yeah, you should be able to hear that clicking away. I'll just grab the phone anyway. So there we go. Hazard lights working. Sorted. So the next one, traction off now, is that next one to do. So let's do that one next. So the traction control off. The only wire we need to use is this grey wire here on the traction control off switch. All the rest, we've already connected. So we've got two grounds and an illumination. One's the ground for the illumination and the other's the ground that switches this wire to ground when you push the button. But because we're all in the same switch now, one ground does both, does the hazards and the traction control. So those three wires we don't need. All we need is the gray one. And the gray one is going to connect into, where's my new switch wiring here? And that's going to go into pin two, which is white and red, which is that wire there. So that will be our traction control off wire. Okay, that's our white and red it's connected into the grey. And if I start the car up, hopefully the traction control off, oh no, that's stop start, traction control off should work. So let's have a look. Right, right, where's my switch, there it is. So, traction control off, there we go. Traction control on, let's see, I've got the switch. 
Switch there, look. Off. On. Off. On. Brilliant. Working. Right. The only wires left coming off of this now is those two. And they are for the airbag off switch, which got to go up to the glove box. I'm just going to leave them in there for now because I don't have a plug for the switch in the glove box. So I'm just going to leave that, tape it up under the centre console for now until I get the plug that I need. The other three wires left, which is these three, are for the stop start. So they have got to go up to that switch there. So that's a job for another day. And I don't know if you can see, well, it's getting quite steamed up in here, but it, I'm losing light now. It's getting dark. So this is a job for another day. So yeah, stop, start. But the main thing was I wanted to get this most of this sorted and uh, that's what I've achieved. So we'll be back at it tomorrow, provided the weather's all right. I want to try and change the dash tomorrow. The other thing I've got to do is this panel here has got to be taken out of this one. This panel does actually remove. And then I've got to modify this to fit the center console of the facelift because the heat controls are entirely different. I can't use the facelift controls because all the plugs are different, the wiring's different, it uses the screen for your, to show you where your temperature is and fan speed and all that along the bottom. Obviously I haven't got any of that and I'm not using the MG screen, so I need to use these original controls and I've got to make this panel fit the centre console, so that should be fun. Right, it's a new day. Um, I'm going to take the dash out of it today and uh, hopefully get the new one in. Uh, the heavens are going to open up today, so uh, I'm going to be going to work to do this because uh, I need both doors open and I'm also up against the side of the house as well. So let's get on it. And incidentally, if there's anything you need out of here, which I'm not going to be using, obviously I'm going to need the clocks and stuff like that. But anything which I'm not using, if you need it or want it, drop me an email. We'll sort something out. It's all going to be going cheap because I just don't want it all hanging around too long. I have stacks of spares after this and I just want it all gone. So if you want anything, drop me an email. Email address is down there and uh, we'll sort something out. Right, let's go to work and start ripping it to bits. Bonnet lever just prizes off. But what you've got to make sure is you don't lose the little clip. That little clip in there, just make sure that stays in because it can be easily lost. Get these seal trims off now. A lot of Torx bits here which hold the dash in and get them out. Oh, Jason! Right, let's 
holds them. Ten mil that holds this to the frame as well down here. Right. Two torque bolts up here which hold the air back to the frame. Right. Uh, onto the other side now I think. This is why I don't come to work with doing my own stuff. You always get fucking collared in. Right, that should come out. Oh, fucking hell. You are. Doesn't it? Yeah. Should do. It's just a normal end. Yeah, I don't know, just won't work. Hmm. <coughs> right, there is a bolt behind here for the dash frame. So we need to take all this off now to get to that one bolt.
the wiper motor now and the bolt is behind the wiper motor. And that there is the bolt that holds the steering column support. Jason, um, I think I need some help. <laughs> I need a lot of help. I don't think. I'm oh, I know that. I need help for doing this. <laughs> uh, that's one of the sales ones. They just. Said two tire pressures on, so I'm just giving it to you and passing the buck pretty much. As you finish that, you want to set another bit on the chest for shoulders. I hope so. When we get into that one, uh, what do you need out of uh, Well, this really, to try and lift it out of the car. Around the other side, yeah. Um, what do you room. want me to pull it's from you? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll pass it to you. Oh, there is a wire on the dash. Hang on. Fucking hell. You've got to pull it completely to the frame because you can't get the dash off the frame. Right. There's only two wires going in. Okay. Beauty. Right. right. Just drag it over there. I've got to strip it now and get the wire on there. So there we are, dashboard is removed. First thing I wanna do now, I wanna get the frame in. I've gotta strip the old one now, get the wiring harness out of it, and swap it all over. So yeah, it's all good fun. Right, I can get this bracket out. There's a wiring loom on there. Lift one. <clears throat> All right, working one handed, it's not happening. This is the bracket we need to change it for, so I've got to wiggle that back around there.
this should fit. That's it. It's like it's meant to be like that, isn't it? I oh, know they weren't them, it was them ones. and bolting under the bonnet now. Okay, wiring loom swapped over. We're now ready for the dashboard. Somewhere around here as well, there's a peg. Yeah, some out, I think. Yeah, that looks good. That is. Yeah, their back thing's lined up. That is uh, not looking too bad, is it? Right, the question is do the vents clear the doors? Yeah. Bob. Facelift dashboard in a pre facelift car. Love it, too. Oh, uh, mate, I'll fucking strip anything. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm Feel guilty about selling me all the parts? Yeah, well, you insisted. <laughs> <laughs> I did insist. Yeah, you're right. But uh, 
They should be fucking over some lady. Um, hopefully, yeah. Right, I have stormed ahead. I'm back home now, because uh, all the rest of the parts are at home. So, um, next I'm gonna fit the head unit and that surround across there now, and the dashboard is virtually done. And check this out. They e the door panels even fit perfectly around the dash. I couldn't believe it. I was expecting to have to do the door panels as well. I can't believe that. Right, anyway, let's get the head unit in it. I'm hoping that the steering interface is going to work with, that was on the last Toto unit. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, but we'll try it anyway. Um, so I've used basically the connector from the last Toto unit because it is exactly the same as the one for this unit. So tuck that down in there. And grab this. Feed the USBs down there. My workshop manager thinks I'm crazier than a box of frogs for doing this. Huh. Right, that's that. Plug uh, that plug into the GPS into the like that. Ariel, where are you gone? Where's the where's the aerial gone? There it is. That into there. Wi-Fi antenna into there. And a microphone into there right and hopefully that should all just fit nicely into there beautiful right screw it in See if it works, guys. Let's turn the key on. There we go. Oh, I've got a tour cap on it. I want some sound. full test of that in a bit let's get it all back together for a minute right surround is somewhere it's here How cool is that? And then finally, the little tray, which goes in there, like so. Almost looks complete now, doesn't it? Right, the next thing I've got to overcome now 
is making that fit in there. Now, when I ordered the center console, the first one arrived damaged, as you can see. So I contacted the seller and told him it's damaged and can you send me just the top part? Well, they sent me a whole nother center console. So I've got two to play with and I can afford to make a mistake. So this thing here, I get it out. I've now got two of these, which I can chop up and make fit, make that fit into there. So, over here, I have started to chop one about, and um, if I can't get this to work, then I also have the original one that come out of the car, which I can chop about and make it fit if I need to. So I can afford to make a couple of mistakes. So there we go. That is the original surround off, out of the original dash that I've modified to fit in there. It's still, I've just got to shave the edges a bit, just make it a bit neater. But for the sake of the video, I'm calling it done because this has been going on for long enough. So there we are. The finished article in all its glory. Cheers for watching all. I'll see you next time.